strikes should continue in order to degrade Hamas infrastructure. In the meantime, the Gaza Health Ministry say there have been over 8,000 deaths. Can you, in good conscience, still hold this line? Shouldn't you think again? Well, I mean, we're, we're all anguished when we see the images of what's happening in Gaza. Everybody wants to see a uh, reduction in the... Uh, the humanitarian suffering of the innocent Palestinians. And Keir Starmer said in his speech today that you've just reported on, he totally understands why people are arguing for a ceasefire. Um, we want to see the alleviation of suffering. Everyone in Labour wants to see that. But he says, and, he, and the, the important argument he was making there is a ceasefire is not for now the correct uh, uh, approach for two reasons. First of all, any ceasefire freezes a conflict and therefore Hamas fighters, weaponry, command centres would still all be in place. And secondly, and secondly, what we all want to see, which is more aid, less civilian, civilian casualties and a, a reduction in the conflict can best, best and most likely be secured by... John. A break in the fighting or humanitarian okay. pauses, and that, that's let, something that uh, let, important allies at the let, US and the European Union also. Well, this is it, isn't, it, isn't it? That he really, rather, this is about him wanting to be seen as a prime minister in waiting that doesn't want to break ranks with what the UK government are doing or the US government. That's what's going on, isn't it? No, he's 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 arguing he's arguing both from a principled and a practical point of view. I'm not. I'm just not getting this at all. Like. One, what's with the word for word repeating of what we've already heard? Two, is it not an obligation of the opposition to provide an opposition? Is that not the point of having an opposition? Even the staunch Tory, you know, paid up members of the Tory party that I've spoken to have said, you know, a party is only as good as their opposition. And um, and they're right, you know, we, we need a good opposition so it works. And we've not had that for many, many years now. And it's really, really impacted stuff. I often get in quite a bit of trouble <laughs> with the lefties because I criticise the Labour Party so much. And they say to me, why don't you criticise the Tories? And I say, well, because they're being Tories. At least they're being honest with the fact that they're like that, you know. But these guys, you know, he even says it here, what he's arguing for, he's arguing for nothing. Keir Starmer is not arguing for or with anybody. He is parroting exactly the same lines as this man is, that they've been given by the Friends of Israel, which are considered an acceptable line to put forward in this crisis. They're not even giving us, a, you know, an ability to, I don't know, even say... Yeah, what that guy says makes sense. Or let's throw some ideas around and see what what makes sense here, you know? If they're talking about infrastructure, then, and you know, they're determined to do this, they could seize fire, they could move everyone to one part of the country, bomb it all, and then move everyone to another. But they're not doing that. They bombed, uh, uh, they bombed southern Gaza last night where they told people to move to. You know, it's it's just sick in the head. I just I, I, I can't get my head around why these people are, are doing this and forcing us into a position where we we don't even have a voice. You know, this this idea that Israel has a right to defend itself. Where's that said? Like, where is where is it said in international law that the occupiers, that the illegal occupiers of a land have a right to defend themselves? Even on the 7th of October, which everyone loves to hark back to, Hamas only went 10 kilometres away from Gaza. That's still Palestinian territory. They didn't break any international laws. Sorry, but they didn't, you know. They've treated hostages well, have broken no international laws. Any ridiculous, and they're getting more ridiculous ideas that they've, you know, murdered kids and all of this, have come out to be patently false, you know, whereas what we're seeing more and more of is Israeli soldiers actually having like not just a laugh about the fact that they're torturing Palestinian prisoners, but actually making like like a ceremony out of it. I don't know if anyone's seen any of those videos, but they are telling. 
it's really, really poor. But what I really want to speak on in this video is the idea of principality. There are people, and I speak to them every day for my sins, and to be honest with you, it's really starting to get me down. So if people can find me on Twitter, I'd appreciate it. I speak to people every day who feel principled in their support of Israel at the moment. They feel like it is the correct and righteous thing to do. And it's absolutely heartbreaking to hear people say that, to hear people speak like that. And you end up having these conversations with people. Like yesterday, <clears throat> I had this woman attacking me who claimed to be a feminist for hours and hours and hours while I was grieving for the refugee camp that had just been blown up with between four and 800 people, mostly children, dead, you know? I saw a picture yesterday of a little girl the same age as my daughter in absolute abject terror, kneeling like kids do next to the body of her dead mother. And it's haunted me. I saw a picture of a little boy, maybe maybe one, maybe two, and he was terrified and he was looking at the blood of his own blood on his hand. Absolutely terrified. And I'll never forget those pictures any more than I'll forget the pictures of kids who have made pillows out of rocks. And those were like 16 years ago. Those are the kids that are now Hamas, you know. Those are the kids I'm supposed to be condemning, you know. And it's that these people feel so principled that they can actually abuse people who think differently to them. And what I don't get about it is like in almost every other movement, in every other situation, I can at least see the humanity in the other side. Even with trans ideology, you know. I get that you've got some confused, what I would call mentally ill people, and I get that there is a lot of desperation and people desperately trying to find a way to be happy in light of uh, of this and who are manipulated by a society that tells them, yeah, you can change sex. Like, I get that. And I also get the frustration because once you've done that to your kids or done that to yourself, you get a little bit antsy about it because you don't want to hear that that was actually pointless and the wrong thing to do. I get that, but this situation, I just, I don't, I don't understand. I can't see any humility in the other side at all. I can't see any principality. I can't see any grace. But what I need from my politicians is, is a choice, you know, is a democratic choice. It's clear that most people don't stand by this. It's clear that most people don't want us engaged in a war with, with Iran, you know. It's, it's clear the further down the line we get with this genocide that people don't want, want anything to do with this. And, um, and we're not being given a choice. Um, Kay Bur oh, it's not Kay Burley, it's the other one, isn't it? It says here is, you know, Keir Starmer is trying to seem like a prime minister in waiting. Does that man really think he's going to be prime minister after this? Does he really not understand that he has split the Labour vote to such an extent that there is literally no way that it's going to be anything but another Tory victory? Because that's what we're staring down the barrel of here. The only thing we can do is refuse to pay our taxes and push for these people to be charged for war crimes because otherwise it's going to be more of the same. I'm um, horrified to see this after what happened yesterday. I'm horrified to think about what's going to happen today. I've had like four hours broken sleep. I'm just an absolute shell of myself, to be honest. People have told me I need to take a break. They're probably right, but I don't understand how I can. Because whenever I lay my head down, I think about... I think about how long it's been since um, Gaza's been able to lay her head down. And I can't... I can't. Anyway... That's our uh, shadow cabinet, apparently. That's the argument that we get to vote for. Go democracy. What a day for it. What a day.